What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here, and I make Revit tutorials. Uh, now, when it comes to working in Revit, Revit is a really cool piece of software. It allows you to do pretty much anything when it comes to building buildings. Uh, but the problem is it has a lot of these annoying problems, these quirks uh, along the way that can really annoy you. Uh, so I decided to create a video where I'm going to be solving the five most annoying problems in Revit that, well, that I find most annoying. Uh, and then I'm going to be showing you the whole solution to those problems and how to avoid them. Uh, now tell me in the comment section uh, below please if, if these are some of the problems that you're having or if you're having maybe different problems uh, tell me and I'll find a solution for those. Uh, now before we get into that just one quick thing I would like to announce that I've uploaded the a whole beginner to intermediate course uh, in Revit up on my website. So it's 16 hours long. It's an, an, an amazing course for anyone that's that's new to Revit and that would like to get good at Revit in the shortest possible time. So check it out. Uh, it's going to be the first link in the description. And also, uh, as always, for all of my Revit project files, as well as some of my courses, check out my Patreon. That's going to be the second link in the description. Okay, so with that out of the way, uh, let's get straight into the tutorial. Okay, so the first uh, really annoying problem that I always uh, found in Revit is the connection between the stairs and the top level. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So what I'm going to do is just go here to the stair tool and then for uh, the stair type I'm just going to go with the monolithic stair and let me just place a single uh, stair uh, run like this and just hit finish. Uh, next, I'm going to jump over to level two and then here I'm just going to add a floor. So this stair just goes up to this floor that I have created here and I'm just going to hit finish. Now, if I go here to the section tool and create a simple section running through this and let's open that section up by double clicking here on the section head you're going to notice that this is the connection between the stair and that uh, floor. Maybe if I turn off the lines, it's going to be uh, visible a bit better. So this is what we get. Okay, this is super annoying. I really don't like this. And what Revit tends to do is it tends to use the floor as the final uh, riser or the final step. And that is uh, just super annoying. And you can get this little gap here. So if I turn this uh, oops, if I turn this off, yeah, so here, uh, if we get through the frailing, we have a gap here. So that's not really what you want to, uh, what you want to have. So how can we solve this annoying problem? So what I'm going to do is just go into edit stairs, go here up to level two, and then I'm going to go to landing and I'm just going to create sketch. So we're just creating uh, a landing as a sketch. So I'm just going to go here and create a simple rectangle and I'm just going to keep the width uh, at the width of the stairs and you can create it really small. So just something like this will do the trick. Hit finish and let's go into 3D. And there we go, this is what you get. So uh, basically it's going to add that element here and you're going to get that connection. Now it's going to look a bit weird if it's too small. So what I suggest you do, and let me just edit this a little bit, is extend it and make it at least as wide as the uh, kind of the the tread of the stair itself. So if we hit finish, now it does look uh, a bit more decent. And also it might look weird like this uh, when it's too thick. That's because this just hit finish. Uh, yeah, so the landing is the 300 millimeter landing, which is uh, way too thick. So you can always go here into edit type and then, oh, okay, this menu is way too large. Uh, okay, so here you can go to your landing type and you can just change that into something smaller like this. Finish apply, okay, and there you go. Looks much better. And now you can simply edit the floor here uh, just to follow that. So I'm just going to use pick lines like this and then use trim and extend like that. And there we go. And for your railing, of course, uh, it is going to kind of form railing all the way around, which is again, super annoying, uh, but uh, that's an easy fix as well. So just go to level two and then you can simply go to the modify uh, tab and then use the split element tool and just uh, split that rail and just get rid of this part, go back into 3D and there you go. Uh, so that was uh, uh, well, the most uh, annoying part about stairs. Now, also speaking about uh, stairs, 
Uh, let's talk about stairs presentation and the floor plan view. So if I go here to level two, uh, we're taking a look at these stairs from the top down and that's why we can see all the steps. But if we go into level one, uh, basically because level one cuts off at 1.2 meters or 1200 millimeters, uh, we get this cut line and then we get these annoying dashed lines for the rest of the stair. Uh, now if this was an other uh, another type of these stairs, so if this was perhaps uh, I don't know, the private stair or something like that, we would even get these dashed lines over here, uh, which are representing the part of the riser, and then here we have the nosing, so there's way too many lines representing these stairs, and if I turn off the lines, it looks terrible, so let's see what can we do about this. So what I'm going to be doing now is just selecting uh, or not selecting anything but going here into the properties. Now make sure that nothing is selected in this view and then you go here to the properties panel and then uh, what you can do is you can get all of the view properties and here you only need to open up the visibility graphics overrides menu. Now let me just move it over here to the side and then here we have to find all of the settings that affect stairs and also railing because here we can see dashed lines for railing. So what I'm going to do is scroll down and first find railings. There we go. Expand that menu and then here what I'm going to be doing is uh, just going to check off all of the above railings. So this is representing all of the railings above. So those are all of these dashed lines. So that's above our view. So if I just hit apply, as you can see, some of the lines are now gone. Uh, now let me collapse this menu and let's expand the stairs menu. Now here we have the above cut marks, so that's something that we don't really need. We have the above nosing lines, that's something that we don't need. Uh, we have the outlines. Now outlines you can keep and you don't have to. I, I prefer to keep it because I like to just see the outline of my whole stair. But the rest of these, the riser lines, of course we don't need those. Those are these horizontal lines. And of course the supports, again, I don't think those are necessary. Now if I hit apply, now as you can see those are gone and we just have this outline. And this line is basically uh, laying out that little uh, piece of landing that we have modeled on top. Uh, but also here we have these dashed lines below that are basically our riser lines, so if I just get rid of those and then hit apply, okay, now they are gone as well and this stair looks much, much cleaner here in the uh, floor plan. Now, speaking of floor plan and representing elements in floor plans, uh, let's uh, take a look at a different element and at a different problem in Revit and that's the problem with visibility of parts. So. Once you get to Revit, and if I go here to Architecture and perhaps create a wall, let's create a multi-layer wall, place it just like that. There we go. Uh, now, of course, we have to change the detail level from uh, coarse into fine to see all the layers. There we go. Now we can see the layers. Now, what can be really uh, annoying about uh, uh, elements is when you turn uh, these elements into parts, sometimes the, visib the visibility is going to be different. So in this case, uh, walls are not affected. So here, as you can see, all of the layers are now turned into parts. But if we take a look at a different element, for example, a floor, and let's choose a multi, uh, uh, multi-layer floor and place it here. Finish. Now we can see the floor. Now if we select it and divide it into parts, it's going to be gone. Now, even though here in the properties panel for the visibility, the parts visibility is set to show parts. Uh, it doesn't really show our floor. Now, if we set it to show original, it will show that floor. But if we want to see the parts they're not going to be visible. So let's see, what can we do? So if I, I'm just going to go back here to show parts, hit apply, and then I'm going to make a simple change and that's uh, due to view range. So I'm just going to make a change in here in the view range menu. And the reason uh, for the view range settings is because uh, Revit uh, has a different approach of viewing floors because floors are usually uh, on the uh, kind of the bottom of your floor, bottom of your view range, or even a little bit below. Uh, it tends to view floors even though they are below your uh, kind of the bottom of your view range. Uh, but when you turn that floor into parts, it does doesn't have that viewing ability for parts. So if you just go here to uh, view range settings and here for the bottom and the view depth if you just change that from 0 to minus 1 millimeter so even minus 1 millimeter will do the job. Hit apply 
okay and there we go we have that uh, part visible so just keep that in mind if you're dividing your uh, floors into parts perhaps to add uh, different floor finishes or something like that uh, the visibility is going to be affected and this is how you solve that problem now for the next problem I'm going to be using this office building project and you can find the full 12 hour course up on my Patreon, first link in the description and also it will be up soon on my website so check that out as well, link is in the description, I've got some additional courses there. Uh, okay so what I'm going to be showing you now is a problem that you might be having when working on large projects where you have many families loaded in. So for example for this project this is an office building building project so for example here as you can see we have many many elements we have some elements here for the bathroom uh, some families there we have some families here some laptops uh, tables uh, chairs sofas desks uh, kitchens and so on and so forth here also in the ground level and now when you want to place an additional family uh, you have to go of course to the component tool and then if we open up the drop menu to search for something you're going to notice that it's really hard to find the element. So if I open this up, as you can see, this is how small the, the, the little scroll bar is. So you can scroll indefinitely and it's really hard to find the elements and the thumbnails are quite small. And if you don't know the exact name of the family that you might want to use, uh, then it's going to be really hard to find that uh, exact family. Uh, so uh, an additional way of placing families where you can kind of solve this problem uh, would be to go here and inside of your uh, project browser, scroll down a little bit and then here we have the families, uh, the families node. So you basically just expand this and then you can scroll down and you can search for families by their category. So here, for example, we have some profiles, we have uh, here, uh, we have some curtain wall mullions, but let's say I want to add a lighting fixture, I want to have this outside light. I can just go to lighting fixtures, expand that. Uh, here, as you can see, we have, uh, we have some lights. For example, here we have a street light and I can just grab it, drag it over, and then I can place it here. I can maybe spin it around and then place it on the other side of the street. Uh, so uh, just by using this uh, this menu over here in the project browser, uh, it might be easier to find families or to search for families uh, by their category instead of having to endlessly scroll down in, uh, inside of this uh, component uh, tool inside of the uh, properties panel. Let's hit the escape key a couple of times. There we go. Okay, and one more and the final uh, annoying thing in Revit is uh, when you go to select an element and you accidentally move it. So uh, Revit by default has this option where when you select element, an element, you can immediately move it around. Now this can be really useful in some cases, of course, if you want to just move something a little bit just to see what that would look like. Uh, I personally find this uh, most useful when it comes to uh, manipulating walls. So when you have walls like this, you want to kind of change their position a little bit just to test things out, just to see what, uh, what they would look like. In that case, I find this uh, option really useful. But once you get to a certain level of complexity with your project, it can be really annoying and it can mess things up. So one thing that you can do in order to disable that or to get rid of that is just go here to the architecture tab to the modify uh, to the modify tool and here we have this select menu and then you can open up the drop menu and here we have the drag elements on selection option. Now if I just uncheck that and if I select the element and try to drag it as you can see nothing happens it starts making a cross selection so I have to select it first and then I can move it around so it does add that additional click if you want to move the elements around but it will prevent uh, moving elements by accident so it's a really cool option so it's just over here you can toggle it on and off at any time so it's really useful uh, to have the option to have it turned on in the initial stages of the project and then later on if you're kind of fine-tuning things and uh, working on some detail plans such as this one over here you don't want to mess things up well in that case you just go here and you disable that by clicking here on this checkbox
Okay, so those are the five annoying things that uh, I decided to uh, point out or solve in this tutorial. I hope it was useful and I hope you have learned something new and I hope I have saved you some time and headache uh, in the future. So uh, thank you for watching. If you want to download all of my project files, again, as I said, check out my Patreon link is in the description and also I have a whole new website for hosting all of my courses. It's a far superior platform, so if you're interested, check that out as well. Okay, so that's pretty much it for me. Make sure to subscribe and I'll be back with another tutorial in a couple of days. Have a nice day.